Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about male leopard gecko reproductive health. I've already talked about female leopard gecko reproductive health, though I'm not sure if that will come out before or after this one, but you can expect them to come out around the same time. So if you subscribe or are already subscribed, then you'll be, oh, actually hit the notification bell because you'll be notified of when it goes out. See, do that. There's a couple disclaimers I have to make just like I did with the other one. Number one, I am not a breeder, so I'm not going to be able to give you information about how to breed your geckos in this video. So if you're looking for that, this ain't, this ain't it. However, that doesn't mean that you won't find helpful information here if you are a breeder. So if you're interested in learning about it, stay here. Number two disclaimer, make sure that your gecko is actually a male. So if you don't know how to sex your leopard gecko or you're not sure if you got it right or you just want to check, you can do a quick Google search or you can watch my video up here about how to sex your leopard gecko. But just make sure that you have a male because this video only applies to male leopard geckos. Like with a lot of my other videos, I will include timestamps down below that can help you navigate this video because sometimes you might only be interested in hearing one thing. And so go ahead and check the timestamps for that one thing. Oh, before we get started, please like and and subscribe and notification bell all that stuff okay let's go ahead and get started for males breeding season is the same as it is for females it is about february to june sometimes you can notice their behaviors starting earlier or you know starting later it just depends each gecko is going to be different but february to june is the good estimated time now that is for where i live in the united states you might have different temperatures where you live or like a different summer season or spring season typically you can expect your geckos both male and female to have their behaviors for reproduction kick up in the spring and beginning of summer now what do these behavior changes look like for a male leopard gecko really not much my males will still eat during breeding season and they'll still behave normally sometimes they will have increased activity sometimes i'll notice them trying to get out of their enclosure to find the lady and sometimes they will do the occasional tail wiggle which is like if they think they smell a lady gecko nearby they get a little so sometimes they'll do that, but really their behavior is pretty much the same. In order to talk about the issues that males can have, we have to talk about like what they have. So they have femoral pores, which are a little V shape of pores above their vent. They also have hemipene bulges and the bulges are like you can see externally by their vent. Internally, they are just hemipenes. So they'll have one on each side. Now the reason that's important is because both issues that they have occur with their pores or occur with their hemipenes. So let's get into that. First we'll talk about plugged femoral pores because that is probably what you'll experience most often or most commonly. So during breeding season, males will secrete a waxy buildup from their pores. This is normal and it is, shouldn't become a concern unless you're noticing that they are really swollen, red, or if they are just really wide looking, like if they don't look natural. Leopard geckos will naturally have this waxy buildup and if you provide them with enough in the enclosure to rub their pores on, they should just fall right out. They should just scrape off. But if they're having issues getting it out or if they're having nothing to rub on on the enclosure or if they just are one of those geckos that's prone to these problems, which we'll get to in a minute, then they will have a buildup that they can't get out. And sometimes this can become infected. It can become just severely built up and just at that point, then you have to assist them. The one thing I wanna say before I talk about how to get rid of these pores is do not pop them like they're acne. Don't just pick at them like they're a scab. These are sensitive areas for leopard geckos. We can't feel what they're feeling. So like we can't really know how much it causes them discomfort, except with the fact that like they retaliate when you mess with their pores. It doesn't feel great to them. So what you wanna do is be as gentle as possible and start out with a warm soak to soften up the area for the plug extraction. When I say warm water, I mean lukewarm. You don't want it to be above like 80 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. And also make sure you're using a dechlorinator if your water is treated by the city or if like you know you need to use dechlorinator naturally. After you're done soaking your gecko, what you need to do next is again, don't pop it. Don't pick at it like a scab. What you wanna do is massage the area beneath it or above it so that you're kind of wiggling it out of place. And then once it starts to come out a bit, then you can pull it out. But you don't just wanna rip at their skin. You don't just wanna pop it like human acne. Don't do that. 
is not safe and it causes pain to your leopard gecko. Once the plug comes out and the pore is exposed, it can kind of look like an open hole. You're gonna wanna be careful to make sure that no infection sets in. So just keep an eye on it over the next few days, but it should close up with no issue. So I have this gecko named Tywin. He's gonna be the example that I use for femoral plug issues. And that is because he's my only gecko that has these issues. All my other geckos are able to get rid of their secretions naturally. His builds up because he doesn't have open pores available. So if you look at this picture I share on the screen of him, his pores are partially scarred over and only some are available, which means he gets a buildup underneath his skin that's not able to come out. So this is not something you'll normally encounter in a healthy leopard gecko. I don't know how this happened with Tywin. It happened before I got him. But what it causes is that he gets a buildup underneath the skin and it kind of has to be massaged around enough that like the available pores can secrete what the other pores are unable to. And because of this, he also sometimes gets uh, infections. And it's just, it's all around unpleasant for him. I feel really bad that he has this problem, but he handles it like a champ. Now I'll put some pictures on the screen here of what his secretions have looked like over time. After I purge his pores, the ones that I can purge anyway, and get everything out that was built up underneath of his skin, the area is left with some of the pores pretty open and exposed. And so I take a Q-tip dipped in saline solution and just rub it over the skin just to make sure it's a bit clean. And then I put him back in his enclosure. His enclosure does not have substrate at that time. I'm, I don't want substrate to get inside of his open pores or to just irritate the area in any way. So he goes back onto kitchen cabinet liner and the area is kept very clean as the pores close back up. If you are worried about purging your gecko's pores or don't feel comfortable doing it, it's not a problem to ask a vet to do it. They are trained, they know how to do it, and they'll also be able to provide a sanitary environment in which to do so. So there is no shame in contacting a vet about this, at least for the first time. Plus they can show you how to do it. So yeah, just an exotic vet is always a good resource to have. The next issue I want to address is sperm plugs or sometimes also called seminal plugs. Sperm plugs or seminal plugs are a buildup of reproductive material and typically you can find them poking out of the vent of your male leopard gecko. I wouldn't say it occurs on both sides. Usually in my experience, it's one hemipene that has this issue, not the other. And funnily enough, I think that for Tywin, it's his, I think for Tywin and Rego, it's both their right hemipene. I could be wrong, but I think it is they're both, both their right ones. Sometimes you'll notice the sperm plug because after your gecko has shed, there might be a little bit of shed attached to the sperm plug. Now that's how I first became aware of Tywin's and Rago's, but now because I know that they have those issues, I look out for them. And sometimes you can see the vent open a little bit because the sperm plug is protruding. Sometimes you can see a little bump where the hemipene is, but it's like an additional bump. And that's how you know there's a sperm plug there. There's a lot of different ways you can become aware of a sperm plug's presence. However, when you do become aware of them, they do need to be removed. I do want to say that just make sure you're not mistaking a normal hemipene bulge for a sperm plug bulge because if you are just causing pain to your gecko for no reason that would be really unkind so just make sure you know what you're looking at and again there's no shame in contacting your exotic vet if you're just not sure what you're looking at so again there's a number of ways you'll see it either it'll be attached to a little bit of stuck shed or it'll be popping out of the cloaca or it'll be causing the cloaca to be opened a bit or it'll be causing some swelling underneath of the cloaca by the hemipene so there's a lot of different ways you can find out about it but when you do find out about it it needs to be removed the good thing is if it's already attached to a piece of shed it's pretty easy to grab and remove just be very careful when you do that if it's already exposed a bit from the vent like if the vent is open and you can see it it's also pretty easy to remove it becomes a bit more challenging when it's more internal and you can see it bulging underneath the skin but you can't see it when you pull back on your gecko's tail and their vent opens. If you can't see it, then I would consult a vet because it gets a bit trickier. But if you can see it, then you can remove it at home. I do recommend doing this with sanitized materials. So if you're going to use tweezers, make sure that they're sanitized. If you're gonna use your hands, make sure they're sanitized or you're wearing gloves because you are touching a sensitive area of them. And so just for their safety and yours, you should be using sanitized materials. But 
what you're going to want to do is very gently grab onto the exposed part of the plug. Don't grab onto their skin. Don't grab onto the hemipene. Just grab onto the exposed part of the plug and then gently pull it out. Sometimes when you do this, it will pull the hemipene out with it. And we'll get into that in a minute, but that's just something to keep in mind. I will address it. So what does a sperm plug look like once you get it out? I'll put a picture on a screen. I have a couple different pictures, hopefully, because Ragos are super tiny. It's hard to even notice what they are. Hopefully I have some of Tywin. The thing to note about sperm plugs is that they do reoccur. And if a gecko has had one, they'll probably have another. Sometimes geckos are able to pull them out by themselves. Like sometimes a gecko will groom himself down there and then he'll just remove the plug himself sometimes they'll remove it when they're shedding but it's just it's good to be aware of the geckos that typically aren't able to remove their own because they'll probably need your assistance more than once in my experience rego has had sperm plugs like over and over and over again he i literally just removed one last night like he has them all the time. He has them more than Tywin does. Tywin, I would say, gets like one or two a year. Rago gets one like every other month, if not more. Like he gets them all the time in his right hemipene. That's his, that's his problem hemipene. Now that I've addressed the sperm plugs, which can occur from the hemipene, let's talk about the hemipene itself and an issue that can happen called hemipene prolapse, which is basically where the hemipene pops out of the cloaca and does not naturally retract. It is supposed to naturally retract back inside of the vent. However, sometimes it doesn't. And in Rago's case, it pretty much never does and always needs to be assisted back into place. <laughs> this can occur with one hemipene. It can occur with both. I've only experienced it with one at a time. But also, please don't mistake this for like an actual prolapse of your gecko's internal organs. And typically when a hemipene prolapses, it'll just be like popping out the side of the cloaca and it's just like a little pink organ. Whereas with like an organ prolapse, it's going to be coming from the middle of the cloaca, if that makes sense. Regardless of whether or not it's a hemipene or another organ prolapsing, you have to keep the area moist. If it's a hemipene prolapsing, you might be able to get it to go back in yourself. If it's an organ prolapsing, go to the vet immediately. Immediately. Now, if it's a hemipene prolapsing, you can try and coax it back in yourself, but if you're not feeling confident with doing that and it's not going back in with some moisture on its own, take it to the vet. One pretty simple method of getting it to go back inside is just to place your gecko in a container of water. These methods did not work with Rago. He had to have his literally lubed back into place by the vet, not once but twice. And then the other two times it's happened since, I've been able to do it myself, but I was unable to do it on the first two times it's popped out. So he's had his pop out four times and two times assisted by the vet, two times assisted by me, like I said. But my vet says like each time, like if it just keeps happening and we're not able to get it back in, we're just gonna snip snip, we're just gonna cut it off because it has caused so many problems for Rago with how it keeps coming out. Because the problem with the hemipene coming out and exposing itself, <laughs> exposing itself, uh, being exposed is that it can cause infection. It can cause the organ to become necrotic and die off and then that will spread into the body. And it's also painful. It's also uncomfortable for them. So the organ is meant to be inside their body, not touched by the air or by substrate or by anything like that. And so it just can cause all kinds of problems for them health-wise to be outside the body. If your gecko does pop out, just make sure you keep it moist until you can get to the vet or keep it moist until you're able to get it to go back in on its own. If you're unable to, again, please seek a vet because they'll be able to help. Now, the one thing I want to address is that in some males, the hemipene will just pop out out, but it'll also go right back in. So just make sure that you are aware of like a prolapse is like where it's not going back in on its own. And then sometimes the hemipene will just pop out like, hello, and then go back, you know. So sometimes it does go back on its own. Uh, sometimes it doesn't. You really want to keep an eye on your gecko in that time just to make sure that it does go back because if it doesn't, you'll need to have intervention. If you have a gecko that has a reproductive health problem, just keep up with it. You know, don't be too stressed out about it because these things happen, you know, and make sure you, you know, drink some water, eat a snack, do whatever you can to de-stress and then just manage the situation after that because it can be stressful, but it's okay. You will be able to do it. Your gecko will be fine. And if you are unable to do it, your vet can do it. So it'll be fine. Just, just 
take it easy, you know? These problems happen. This is part of being a pet parent. But that's all I have to say about male leopard gecko reproductive health. If I forgot anything or if you feel like I didn't address a situation well enough and you have experience with this, please leave it in the comments below. I encourage everyone who watches this video to leave their experiences down below and also to check out other people's experiences because I can only speak from my own experiences. And granted, I do have quite a few leopard geckos, but that still wouldn't encompass the majority of experiences people have had. So it's always good to learn as much as you can. So leave any comments you have down below about your own experiences and check out other people's. With that said, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it informational and insightful. Please let me know if you did down below or by leaving a like. Also, please subscribe, hit the notification bell, all that good stuff, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!